Okay, in the last video we did an investigation of trigonometric ratios. Let's give it a definition and talk about how to apply trig ratios on this one. So in section 9.4 and 9.5 we introduced trig ratios. Um, a trigonometric ratio, okay, again, is a ratio of, a ratio of the ratio, great sentence here, um, of two sides in a right triangle. Um, and we use a chosen acute angle used as the reference angle to accurately create the ratio, okay? So just a reminder, if we have a right triangle, I'm going to draw one off to the side. Um, we have our right angle, and it's always opposite the hypotenuse. Then we choose one of the acute angles, so both of these other angles in the triangle are acute. If this is the one that I want to use as my reference angle, and you get to choose. When you create a trig ratio, um, you can choose which one you're using. Sometimes they'll give you one of the angle measures, so you may as well use that one. Um, then there's always what we call its opposite leg. So this is the leg that is opposite of your reference angle. And we have the adjacent leg. That's the one that is next to your reference angle. Okay. The trig ratio, <clears throat> each take two of them. So you have your tangent, you have your cosine, and you have your sine. Um, what is the tangent ratio? Well, the tangent ratio relates the legs together. So here's a leg, here's a leg, and it relates these two together. The sine ratio relates a leg and the hypotenuse, and the cosine relate, ratio relates the other leg and the hypotenuse. So again, how do we tell how to build the ratio? Um, well, we go ahead and we write it out, the tangent of, and then you're going to, the way it's abbreviated is T-A-N. We still say tangent, though. Um, and then you're going to put an angle measure in here. So this is like an angle in degrees. Um, and then it's equal to, and you do your ratio. Now, again, the tangent is always the opposite leg. We'll talk about how to look at that on the triangle. So you have your opposite leg, and you divide that by the measure of your adjacent leg. Okay. Um, when I write out my sine ratio, I kind of do the same thing. I take sine of an angle, and I'm writing the angle in here, hopefully, so that you can see that's where we put the angle. And then sine is the opposite leg in relation to the hypotenuse, okay? And then lastly, the cosine of an angle, again in degrees, um, is equal to, and it doesn't have to be in degrees, but it's the only one we've talked about so far, so we're gonna do the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So each of them take two sides of the triangle to relate together. So on this first one, um, I'm gonna let A be my reference angle. So I would say the tangent of A, now I don't know the angle measure, so I'm just going to put A in there. Um, again, that would be the opposite leg, so this would be like the leg opposite over here. That would be BC over whatever the other leg length is, so AC. Now, again, that's because I chose A as the reference angle. Um, <clears throat> if I were to choose B as the reference angle, Notice now the opposite leg is AC, so I would do tangent of B. Well, that would be equal to the opposite leg, which is AC, over the adjacent leg, which is BC. So notice it's the exact reciprocal because you just chose the other reference angle. Okay. Um, now on the next one again, you choose your reference angle. So let's say again I choose A. Um, the sine of angle A then is equal to the opposite leg, which again is BC in this case because I chose angle A as my reference angle, and it's over the hypotenuse. So in this case, their hypotenuse is AB. And then lastly, cosine, let's choose A again just for the sake of consistency. The cosine of angle A is equal to, notice this adjacent leg down here is AC over the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse there always stays the same as the one across from the right angle got our cosine. So if we can set up these ratio, what I want you to notice is a, to create this um, little equation, it takes three things. It takes an angle, and again you get to choose which angle. It takes a side length and another side length. So if I know an angle and one of the sides, I can find the other side. If I know the two sides, I can find the angle. Um, I can find any of these three pieces as long as I know the other two. Okay. Um, okay, first of all, let's practice just writing the ratio. So maybe I should leave that up there. Um, <clears throat> again, remember the sine of A, so I'm going to use A first. 
is sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is like opposite leg. Here's my hypotenuse and here's my adjacent leg. So sine is opposite, which in this case is length 5, over hypotenuse, which is length 13. Okay. Um, cosine, if we look up here, remember cosine is adjacent leg over hypotenuse. So this time it's going to be 12 over 13. Both of those use the hypotenuse. And then the tangent uses the legs. So opposite leg, which in this case, opposite again of A would be 5. So we're going to put 5 over the other leg, which is 12. Okay. Now the next one asks for us to find the sine of B. So now I'm going to ignore angle A for now and I'm going to use angle B. Notice when I do that, the hypotenuse stays the same. It's still the hypotenuse, but now this becomes the opposite leg and 5 is now next to B, so it becomes B's adjacent leg. So when I find the sine of B, its opposite leg is 12 over the hypotenuse is 13. When I find the cosine of B, um, its adjacent leg is 5 over the hypotenuse, which is 13. And then I have the tangent of A. Again, its opposite leg is 12, and its adjacent leg is 5. So just like we talked about up top, um, these are going to be reciprocals um, because we're using two different angles. And notice that the sine of B is the same as the cosine of A because they're just... Um, using the opposite leg which changes when you change your angle. So that's the way that works and a lot of times again if we know the degree measure we actually put the degree measure inside of the parentheses so we have sine of 60 degrees. Well sine again is opposite leg so this guy's upside down here's the right angle so this over here is the hypotenuse and the sine of 60 degrees would be that opposite leg or 5 square root of 3 over the hypotenuse length which is 10. Now we'd simplify that fraction, I just don't have room so I won't. Um, the cosine of 60 degrees would be that adjacent leg, that 5 over 10. Okay, and then the tangent of 60 degrees is the opposite leg, which was 5 square root 3, over the adjacent leg, which is 5. Okay, and then sine of 30 degrees, just the opposite, so if I'm doing sine of 30, I would do 5, opposite leg, over the hypotenuse. So 5 over 10. Cosine, right, is it's adjacent. So if I'm talking 30 degrees, adjacent is the leg next to. So 5 square root 3 over the hypotenuse, which is 10. And then the tangent, um, again, of 30 degrees would be 5 over its adjacent leg, 5 root 3. Um, again, notice that relationship maintains. These are reciprocals. Um, the sine of one angle measure is the cosine of the other acute angle measure. So how do we remember all of these? Um, there's a little cute Native American little chief over here with feathers um, because the term that we use, an acronym that was created by someone at some point, um, we call SOCATOA and it sounds like um, a Native American term. It's a beautiful term because it does help us remember all three of these. So SO meaning the sine ratio, okay? And I write this a little different than some people because I want us to remember their ratios. So SO means um, sine is O over H. So this is like sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You usually don't write these words in, but just so you know what it stands for. Then we do ka, so SO ka, then TO wa. So you've got sine is that first one, cosine is the middle one, and we remember it's the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And then you've got tangent is the T for TOA, and that's the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So those are the two legs. So again, we say SOCATOA, 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 SOCATOA. We want to make sure we remember that and that we spell it right or we don't remember them correctly. So if you want to Google SOCATOA, you can see probably a million songs where they sing SOCATOA, then that'll get in your head. So let's talk about how to use it real quick. Um, we're just going to do a few examples here. Um, <clears throat> this says use the tangent ratio to solve for a leg of the triangle. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is just build your trig ratio equation first, and then you can solve for the variable. So um, I want to see your work, especially those of you in honors that are preparing maybe to head to an IB class. We need to practice showing that work. So we're going to build the trig ratio. Um, this one right here, I apologize, doesn't have a right angle, and it has to be a right triangle to use trig ratios. So go ahead and draw in your right angle there. 
Um, and then we're going to build a trig ratio. So the first thing I'm going to do is choose an angle to be my reference angle. You can't choose the 90 degrees, so I'm going to choose the 30 degrees since that one's given to us. And <clears throat> um, you'll notice here that if I'm looking at this, uh, this leg right here that's X that I want to find is opposite of the 30 degree angle. So this is the opposite leg. And you'll notice the one that I know that they gave me the length of, this is the adjacent leg. Okay, I don't know anything about the hypotenuse and it's not asking me to find the hypotenuse. So I'm not actually going to find this value here, which means I don't need sine because it uses the hypotenuse. Cosine uses the hypotenuse. Tangent is the one that relates the two legs together. So I'm going to build the tangent ratio. So I'm going to say tangent of, and again, we use our angle measure, 30 degrees, is equal to opposite leg, which is x, over adjacent leg, which in this case is 15. Now remember, when you build your trig equation, if you know two of the pieces of these three parts that make up the trig equation, you can solve for the third or unknown part. Um, if this was x and this was y, then I'd be stuck because I need at least two of the pieces to solve for the third piece. Once you have your trig equation, uh, you're just going to solve it. So if I wanted to solve for x, right, and there's a 15 in the bottom, then I need to multiply by 15 to get rid of it. And if I multiply one side by 15, I also have to multiply the other side by 15. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So in this case, um, and I'm going to put x on the left side, x is equal to 15 times the tangent of 30. Now our calculator is what's going to help us um, multiply the tangents and sines and cosines. So 15 tangent of 30. Um, and you're just going to put that in your calculator. So you're going to go to calculator 15 times the tangent of 30. You can put the time symbol if you want and then do the tangent of 30. Um, or if you just type in 15 um, tangent of 30, uh, you'll notice that you're going to end up with the same thing. Now I want to make sure that you understand we are inputting or I am inputting 30 degrees inside my calculator. Calculators automatically uh, default to a radian measure. So if you push mode, which is right by your blue button, it takes you into these different modes. And you'll notice on mine, the third one down, and yours might be different if you look at my cursor going around, it's pink. Um, you can put it in radian mode or degree mode. So it defaults to radian mode. And I'm going to show you just so that you can see it on my main screen. If I do 15 tangent of 30 and I'm in radians, then that 30 doesn't mean 30 degrees anymore. It means 30 radians. And the calculator gives me something very different. Remember, I'm calculating the length of the side of a triangle and it just gave me a negative value. Um, you'll notice when you're in radians, hopefully, um, and you can quickly fix it because you're going to get an output that doesn't make sense. Um, so in your mode, always, always, when you're doing your right triangle trig this um, year, you're going to put it into degree mode. So make sure in your degree mode, now if I go back and put 15 tangent of 30, I end up with that 8.66 again. So I'm going to go ahead and round that to 8.7. Um, so down here, I have x is equal to 8.7. And that would make sense here. Here's this is 15. This opposite leg is about 8.7. Okay. Let me do another example with this, and then we'll talk about one of the other ratios. So number four, um, we are calculating again uh, this value of x down here at the bottom. And notice here's the reference angle it gave me. Um, this leg over here becomes the opposite leg. So I'm going to label it so I don't mess it up. And then this right here, this time is the adjacent leg. So here I'm going to have the tangent, because again, it's both legs, of 20 degrees is equal to uh, opposite leg, which is 10, over adjacent leg, which is x. Now, thinking about how to solve this one, if I multiply both sides by 10, that doesn't really help me at all, because then I get 100 over here when I multiply by 10. This one, we have to think about it as multiplying by x to get it out of the bottom. So I'm going to write this out in that way. So if I multiply, say, by x to get it out of the bottom, that's x times the tangent of 20 is equal to 10. And if I'm solving for x and that's multiplying, I would then want to divide by the tangent of 20. Now, remember, you have to have a trig function with an angle. You can never, ever, 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 ever just divide by 20. 
Um, tangent of 20 is one number in and of itself. So you divide by the tangent of 20. And that, again, becomes a calculator thing. So 10 divided by the tangent of 20 will give me the value of x. So I'm going to go back to my calculator, and I do 10 divided by the tangent of 20 degrees, um, and I get 24.47. So I'm going to write 27.5 Oops, as my answer here. Okay. Now, on your assignment today, again, you're going to practice with things like more than tangent. Um, <clears throat> so I do want to show you one where we're using something other than tangent. I'm actually going to jump onto your next guided notes page. Um, not at the top, though. I'm going to come down because the top talks about finding angles. So I'm going to use the sine or cosine ratio down here. Um, notice on number 11, this is actually very much the same problem, but instead of finding this leg down here with a 20 degrees reference angle, um, we're finding the hypotenuse length. So again, I apologize if someone doesn't have a right angle, just go ahead and draw that in. So on this one it says solve for x, round to the nearest tenths. So what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, here's my reference angle. Um, here's the opposite leg that it gave me, so that's really helpful. And here's the hypotenuse. Um, that's what I want to find this time. So this time I don't know the leg, I don't care about the other leg. Um, this time it's the opposite leg and the hypotenuse. So if you think about Sokoto, and I'm going to write it again right here, anytime you're doing this just write this at the top of your assignment to help you out. Um, the one that uses the opposite leg and the hypotenuse looks like is sine, uses opposite leg and hypotenuse. So instead of tangent I'm going to use the sine of 20 degrees and this is going to be equal again to the opposite leg, which is 10 over x. So even though it looks just like the last problem I did, I go ahead and solve, right, by multiplying x, and I end up with x sine of 20 is equal to 10. I divide by the sine of 20 to get x by itself. Uh, because I'm using a different trig ratio, this x value is going to be different, right? The hypotenuse has to be longer than both of those legs. So again, I go to my calculator, and this time I do 10 um, divided by the sine of 20. So I use sine instead of tangent, and I end up with 29.23. So if I come back here, this would be 29.2. Okay. So notice if this was the same triangle, and let's say this was y down here at the bottom, I could use tangent on this one, and I could figure out y, which we already figured out on the last practice problem, right? We said it was 27.5, and now you just figured out the hypotenuse, which is 29.2. So now you know all the legs of that triangle where this is 20 degrees. Okay, now I want to do one more example, um, just because on your homework assignment today, there will be a section where you are asked to find the missing length. So let's look at number 12 here. Um, our missing length in this case would be x. So again, notice with our right angle um, there at the lower right hand corner of our triangle, this again is the hypotenuse. And um, then once you find x, it will ask you to find the other missing leg as well using the Pythagorean theorem. So remember, if we know two sides of a triangle, then we can always use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. So I'm going to walk through those two steps just so you have an example with your homework. Um, number 12. Uh, so again, if I want to find the value of x and I have this as my reference angle, uh, then notice here I have the adjacent leg. So this time I don't know the opposite leg. And then the hypotenuse is what I want to find. So if I use the adjacent and the hypotenuse, if I look up here, sine is opposite and hypotenuse, so I'm not going to use this one this time. But cosine is the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So if I adjacent and hypotenuse to build my trig function, I'm going to use cosine. So we write COS of, again, our reference angle in this case is 72 degrees. And we're going to have adjacent leg, right, over the hypotenuse. So 8 over x. Again, we go ahead and we solve. We multiply by x because x is the, in the denominator. So x times the cosine of 72 is equal to 8. And we end up dividing the cosine of 72. So x is equal to 8 divided by the cosine of 72. 8 divided by, this time I'm using the cosine button, of 72. And it looks like it's going to be about 25.88 or 25.9. 
So I'm gonna have 25.9, <clears throat> okay? Now, if I'm using this value to continue on and find another value, we call this an intermediate value, because um, it's not our final answer, but it does help us arrive at our final answer, and it is one of our final answers, because that is x. So notice now you know that this leg right here is eight, this hypotenuse is 25.9, so if I wanna use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing length, I'm gonna call this, let's say y, just to be a value here, and my triangle's not named. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, okay, well, leg squared, so in this case, eight is one of the legs, plus the other leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, okay? Again, this is just the Pythagorean theorem. So eight squared, right, is 64 plus y squared. Um, 25.9 squared, let's do that. 25.9, we square that, is equal to 670.81. So this would be 670.81. Um, we then could solve for the y squared by subtracting the 64. So y squared is equal to, and I'm just going to keep doing this in the calculator so you can see it, minus 64 is equal to 606.81. And then we square root both sides to get rid of that squared on our y. And we get y is equal to, so let's square root that value, square root um, of 606.81. We end up with 24.6. So 24.6 would be the value of y. So that allows us to find that missing side that we didn't know. And then notice they have to kind of make sense if this is eight, this is 24.6, and then our longest is always the hypotenuse at 25.9. Okay, so the Pythagorean theorem is always fair game if you know two of the side lengths. If you don't know two of the side lengths, then we need to use an angle to help us find um, another side length. And remember, we choose the trig ratio, sine, cosine, or tangent based on the information given and what we want to find. If we're given one of the pieces, then we want to use the trig ratio that uses that piece. Um, and then also uses the piece of the value that we want to find. Okay, so you're going to practice with each of these trig ratios today, just finding the legs um, in the next video. And uh, we'll talk about how to find an angle given.